like, how do you prepare for that hey <laughs> I had moved to Nashville, and I hadn't been there long, maybe less than a year. I had a record deal. I hadn't signed it yet, but the lawyers were, you know, it was in motion. And that's when I got the Van Halen call. <laughs> Van Halen contacted me because of two, two different people. Um, first was Steve Hoffman, the late Steve Hoffman, who was my road manager, and he went to work for their current manager or at the time when this stuff was happening i guess the conflicts with sammy were happening they were thinking who could do this gig and steve said mitch malloy could do this gig eddie called a few times and hello before i knew it i was in first class on my way to la Because I just flew in that day, he wanted to give me a day off. We're not going to do anything today, you know. We'll just, we'll hit it tomorrow, kind of thing. So we went grocery shopping, which was a trip. I mean, he took me in his brand new Porsche Turbo that he just got and drove like a maniac. I mean, I was like, I was honestly scared for my life. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I mean, I was scared for my life. And I thought, this is, this is how I'm really going to get famous, dying with Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> Hanging out with Van Halen was exactly what you would think. There was one day we were hanging out, we were talking about health. He was like, I'm healthy. <laughs> he was like, check this out. And he lifts up his shirt, shows me his stomach. Take your best shot. Hit me as hard as you can. I never did hit him. He said, I don't remember hitting him. Uh, my next guest, an up-and-coming young vocalist and songwriter. He's just released his debut album titled Mitch Malloy, here performing Our Love Will Never Die. Please welcome Mitch Malloy. You know, I've always been the kind of guy that thought big things were going to happen for me. I I always thought I was going to be on Leno. Always. I just was like, I'm going to be on that show. I never once thought I'm going to be in the name. It never occurred to me that that band would call. I can't, I mean, I still, when I think about it, it's just like, it just seems like not real. In Nashville, at that time, coming from rock as I was, was a very bad thing. When Van Halen called, I said, listen, I, I'm definitely going to come out there and we'll give this a go because you're Van Halen and I grew up loving that band. But I don't want anybody to know about this because if it doesn't happen, you know, Nashville finds out I auditioned for Van Halen, so I must really be rock. I mean, if Eddie Van Halen calls, I'm rock, right? I mean, kind of confirmed. So um, they didn't say anything about it. They didn't say anything about me. That's why nobody knows about this because they kept it quiet and I kept it quiet until recently. It was really a good chemistry between us as people, it seemed like. It was really fun. I mean, can you imagine doing Panama with Van Halen? I was staying in the guest house across from the house house. Phone rang and it was the studio manager and he said, they want you up here in 20 minutes. I said, up where? He said, in the control room. Just go sit in the control room. To me, it was clear that something had, was about to happen, you know? Either they were gonna say, thank you so much for coming. We're gonna send you home today. Or they were gonna say, congratulations, you're in the band. You know, it seemed like that, I don't know. So they were all in the lounge, I guess having a meeting before I, I got up there. And, uh, and Ed walks in, I'm behind the, the mixing console at 5150 and the door's over there big studio door like this thick the door opens and the light comes in and Eddie's like you know backlit like God 
It was awesome. I never forget the moment. It was a big moment for me. Door closes. He stands there and he's like, well, we just had a meeting. He says, you're the nicest, uh, can I swear? <laughs> he goes, you're the nicest guy I've ever met. You're the best singer I've ever heard in my life. And you look amazing. Congratulations, you're in the band. And I quote, I mean, that's exactly what he said. I was like, and he starts walking towards me and I start walking, I got up, started walking towards him. He gives me the kiss on both cheeks, gives me a hug, says congratulations, turns around and walks out of the control room. As the days went on, we just did more writing, singing, hanging out, talking. The fact that they had to go on MTV and present. And, and he brought it up a lot. He never did tell me though that they were gonna present with Dave. All right, our next presenters may very well represent three quarters of one of the greatest rock and roll bands ever here, having now officially survived. I was back in Nashville and I turned on MTV to watch. It's Van Halen, ladies and gentlemen. They come out and then Dave comes out and I was like, what? I just, my jaw just dropped and I was just like, what are they doing? Why is Dave with them? This is not good for me. <laughs> so it just hit me at that time that, uh, you know, now the whole world thought Dave was back in the band and wanted Dave back in the band, including me. Uh, I wanted Dave back in the band. I mean, I grew up on Van Halen with Dave in it. Those first albums were amazing. I mean, obviously, it, it, it made them what they are today. I think we're here to uh, present Best Meal Video of the Year Award. When I saw Dave come out with them, I, that was it for me. It was over. MTV had a lot of power back then. Everyone was following MTV. What I was told after the fact, they had to do that because MTV said to them, if you want us to support the new Van Halen, you have to come out and present with David Lee Roth. I knew Dave wasn't in the band. They never alluded to that when I was there. It was never even a question that Dave might be back in the band. It was, everybody thinks Dave's back in the band. I'm out. You know, it was more like, this isn't gonna work. I don't think this could work for any other singer. And so that was, that was that. I mean, I just kind of called them and said, this can't work. This can't work for me. Go follow your so the industry now, for me, it, it works well because I can kind of pick and choose what I want to do. Sometimes I want to rock out with a band. Sometimes I want to do an acoustic show by myself. I'm a father, husband. I've got a little girl now. I like playing music, obviously. It's what I've been doing my whole life. But my priorities have changed since we had our, our child. Where I'm at in my career, in my life, is great. Thank you. I've started recording myself at a very, very young age. I got my deal with the, the recordings that I made in my little studio, my little makeshift studio. And my little makeshift studio turned into a, a real studio. I was always mixing my own stuff and people would hear it and go, will you mix my record? I've gotten to work with some big, big people. Some of the people I've worked with, Taylor Swift, Boys Like Girls, Kenny Loggins, Lady Antebellum, Chad Kroger from Nickelback. It's been it's been, you know, like I said, something that I didn't think would happen, and it's just sort of happened, which is kind of a nice thing. 
People ask me, why tell this story now, after all this time? The big Van Halen fans, and there are millions of them, and I'm one of them, they want to know everything about the band. You know, weren't you that guy in Van Halen? I get asked that a lot. Even the fans that are huge, huge fans that think that they know everything about this band, they miss this part. <laughs> there was a biography, a book that came out on the band that I was included in. That seemed to amplify things a bit. So I don't want to be known as the, the crazy guy who goes around saying he's in Van Halen. It's a good thing to do, to tell the story, to document this. It's a cool little thing for people to know that uh, happened to Van Halen, that happened to me. And um, so I'm telling the story. I was coming back from my last European trip in the fall, on the plane, long flight, thinking many things. And it suddenly popped into my head that I needed to get all of my work finished. I needed to get all of the CDs that I've made on iTunes. And it's like, okay, yeah, the Malloy 88's gotta go on there, the new record's gotta go on there, this one, that one. And it dawns on me that there's a Van Halen song that Eddie had written that the band was playing on that he had given to me. Never finished it because of the way things sort of fell apart. I'm just like, what's the point, you know? When I left, he said, go, you know, go home and write this. He's like, you got a studio? And I said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, you know, do this, write, you know, write the lyrics, write the melody and send it to me. So I thought, I gotta finish that. That's something that's almost finished. It's pretty much done and I'm really proud of it. It's great. It's called it's the right time. That's something that people could hear very soon. I had a feeling.